Welcome to the Oddity Shop, where the bizarre is always on sale. Hey, Oddballs, welcome back into the Oddity Shop. I'm Kara. This is Zach, and this is a very special episode. A very, very special. Of the Oddity Shop podcast. Also, y'all know what this is by now. I'm not going to tell you guys what this is. You know what this is. And if you don't know what this is, somebody told you what this is. That's why you're here. It's the podcast where we talk about creepy, weird, odd, strange stories from around the globe. I can't, I can't not tell them. <laughs> that's fine. I, this is one of those things that's so annoying that like influencers do or like um, not us where they're like, we just got off of a really cool phone call. Um, we can't tell you about it, but we just want to tell you about it. And so that's what I'm saying. We just got to have a really cool phone call from something that's coming in the future. And that's all I can say. Oh, so you said what we aren't going to do, but then you did the thing that you're annoyed about? Yeah. We did get off a cool call, though. So um, <laughs> anyways, that's coming at you in a few weeks. <laughs> we have we got new special stuff for you coming. But this all, this episode's also kind of special. Mm-hmm. No, it's very special. But before we get into it, because uh, we got lots to say. What's new with you, Kara? I need, um, <laughs> I can't show you, but I need some, what is it? What is, do you put crystals in? Like I need a dish. Is it a proper name? I need, I have, now I have so many crystals <laughs> that I need. To. A crucible. Yeah. I feel like that's a scientific term. Um, a. Is there not a special name? I don't know. You know what I'm talking about? Like just like a small little, okay, a whatever. Dish? Then I'll just a get bowl? One. I have this cute, it's kind of like a dish, but not really. I'll take a picture and send it to you. But it has like a little dead skull, like a skull of a, um, like an antelope. And it's really cute. And it has all the crystals around it. But now I have so many that it's overflowing. And I can leave it that way because it kind of looks like it's cool. But speaking of crystals, did you put yours outside a couple nights ago for the super blue moon? You mean last night and then the night before? No, I totally forgot because you didn't remind me. Thanks. So that's probably why it didn't work today when I really needed them to. So I know once again, we always say this, we're in the future. Uh, but this was during or we're recording right after the super blue moon. I remembered to put mine outside because I got a lovely call from my mother reminding me that tonight will be wow, a good night thanks, to, get to uh, charge your crystals. Thanks, mom. I really appreciate that. Denise, mom, not my mom. <laughs> my mom texted me and said, hold on, let me go to it, and said, look at the moon. I said, okay. And then I said, it's a full one. And she wrote, you're funny. And then that was it. <laughs> it was a blue moon. Oh. Well, what's new with you? Because um, that could segue into our weekend that we're talking about, but we'll pause on that song. What's new with you? I got my new couch. It's all delivered. I mm. I have moved on from the hating it stage to the now loving it stage. Okay. It was just so big. <laughs> like when you, Are you-, you see it in the <laughs> showroom and you expect one thing, like even though I measured and everything, it had to sit out from the wall a little bit further, but I think I'm going to rearrange the entire room. And then it'll fit great, mm-hmm. but it is so fucking comfortable. <laughs> okay, I'm glad you like Until it. Until last night when I sat my pizza down. I was having a bad day. I sat my pizza down on the couch for like a second while I messed around with some other stuff. Why don't you share what happened before that? Bad day at work, bad day after work. Thought, I'm going to cancel all my plans for the night. I'm going to eat some pizza. No, I wanted you to just share how you almost ruined your new shirt I bought you. So I got grass stains all over the new shirt she bought me. Whatever. Which is what? Uh, it says, I am Kenuff from the Barbie movie. Because <laughs> you really wanted I it. Put a, I took it off immediately. I put a bunch of shout on it, threw it in the wash. <laughs> so now I'm standing shirtless in my shorts. I get the pizza, set it down on the couch, go to do something. I think I was trying to get the cat away from the pizza box. And I sat on the couch and I sat on the pizza. I'm home alone this Mm -hmm. week. So what did I do? Took the shorts off, threw them on the floor, ate the pizza in my skivvies. And And it didn't get on the couch. No, it didn't get on the couch. But all my clothes were ruined. So I just sat in my underwear, angry, eating pizza. It was a great night on my comfy couch. And you watched some ghost hunters and you were happy. I did. I did watch a lot of ghost hunters. Wait, oh, see, I keep keep wanting to segue. Do you you have anything new or do we just need to get into it? Are we too excited? Well... Your summer's ending. You're going on a Traverse City trip soon, right? So that'll be exciting. Do you think Nick's going to let you go take the 
you should book it now if you want to do it. Have you ever taken the tour of the asylum? Um, Taken the tour of the asylum? No. Because so, you can go underground. You go under. Well, okay. So I grew up a couple hours away from there. So we didn't yeah. do the tours of the asylum. We we let ourselves uh -huh. in. But now it, the shops are so cute. You could buy so many cool things. But you can actually take the tour, but you can go under into the tunnels that they used to transfer we also the nurses. We went into the tunnels. We just didn't tell anyone we were doing that okay but has nick done all that no i but no. he did say he wants to go to a little convention next year so i'm slowly turning him yeah so you should get him to do that it actually wasn't bad okay it's not like inter it just kind of walks around the grounds it gives you all of the um the history and stuff which i think he would really appreciate and you're not in the tunnels for that long you just kind of turn the lights off you take some pictures it just shows you how dark it is and it really wasn't expensive. Me and mom had a really good time. I want to do it again, actually. I, but I think he would enjoy that because it's a lot of history, to be honest. Yeah. He'd like that. I think that would be fun. Um, And then I'm going to, um, I'm taking a little, me and my husband are taking a little road trip to see my um, childhood, one of my childhood best friends from school, Ferdinand. I don't even know where we're all going, to be honest. When are you doing this? He, the end of September. You know this. I, it's on my calendar thing that I sent you. You think I read the whole calendar? I've looked at it twice. We're going to North Carolina. Oh, okay. That clicks now. Because I'm taking... Yes, because I'm taking my childhood self to see all of the one tree hill stomping grounds i just want everyone to hear how the tone in her voice changed when i didn't listen to her again on something you're just like my husband all right let's get into okay. it so blue moon blue moon <laughs> um wait what does that have to do with it because we spent the last weekend singing every grease soundtrack song that is true okay i uh, now i'm following um why were we together where were we Oh, you know, <laughs> we're just doing some like kooky little ghostly little fun adventure at Paracon. Paracon. Okay, we're doing this episode differently. We usually tell you guys creepy weird stories. This weekend, we are going to recap the absolute amazing weekend that we had at Michigan Paracon, the 13th annual. We're still coming down off the paranormal high, but we want to give you guys like some takeaways, some of the best moments, talk about some of the, like, the presenters we saw. And the vendors. And the vendors. Oh my god, we spent so much money. If you ever get the chance to go and you are a weirdo like us who is into this stuff, it is so fucking cool. Yeah. I mean... I still don't have words. It's been what now? Almost We've been home a week. Mm -hmm. I can't even believe it. Can't even believe it. It was so good. You're surrounded by the best types of weirdos. You get up close and personal with like the celebrities of the paranormal field. Let, let's talk about some of the presentations. So first off, I had no idea what to expect because your mom goes with your sister and she's gone like a couple. How many? I don't know. I don't remember how many years she told me. you. Went They've gone three or four times. I only went and then you're, once with them. Before. Yeah. And was it your dad's first time last year? So me and my dad's first year was together. That was 2019. Last year. Or I mean, the last time. You yeah. Went, I'm sorry. OK, so um, so I have no idea what to expect because I've never gone. And so I'm like, all right, I'm along for the ride. I got mom, dad, Zach. We're good. We're golden. So I'm just kind of coasting. But I've again, I have no freaking idea what to expect, like whatever. So unfortunately, there was some really bad weather that hit Thursday. Thursday, right? yeah, we went through Detroit and Grand Rapids, like tornado weather. So pre-party stuff kind of was going on Thursday. Which, so we kind of thought it was like a Friday, Saturday thing. Not too much was going on Thursday. So our travels were Thursday. You had to work. Um, so we didn't leave our houses until like mid-afternoon. So we didn't end up getting to Sault Ste. Marie where it was held until six yeah six so we went out to dinner so unfortunately we did miss john tunney speak that night I <laughs> uh, but okay so because of the bad weather first thing saturday morning the presenters who were supposed to friday. go friday friday baby friday friday friday, friday. the the presenters <laughs> who were supposed to go on weren't able to so they had wonderful people it was um rochelle stratton and brian murray mm -hmm. they've been on ghost hunters reboot i think that's where they started they've been on a bunch of other shows these poor people after three hours of sleep were asked like well because they did an investigation the night before with people yeah and then they're asked to go on stage they uh-huh first of all they recounted some of their best paranormal stories but they also were so real they were and i liked that they were like listen we're running on like two hours of sleep like we were asked literally in the middle of the night if we could do this we have nothing ready for you guys so it's raw and real and like you just gonna get what you get and it was really enjoyable actually i loved it though because you got like a different side of the paranormal investigation because you you know yeah when you watch it on tv or on youtube you get the final polished product 
And they're talking about like, like almost scripted. Yeah, yeah. They're talking about their mishaps along the way where like Brian gets really excited and he grabbed a woman by the neck to show her a ghost. He's like, oh my God, I just assaulted her. I mean, her. it was a lot of dick stories and like mishaps with penises. <laughs> he did. He went to grab a guy's hand. It was it was hilarious though. But yeah, it was really it was funny. For them getting up there with like no warning, they did a great job. And it was really crazy because, you know. Some people didn't get there until Saturday. And um, Amy Bruni, which if you don't know her, please stop right now. Amy Bruni's luggage got lost. And when she got it, it was like absolutely soaked. And she had to go to like TJ. She told her mom she had to go to TJ Maxx and go buy a whole outfit for Saturday because all of her stuff was completely soaked and ruined. It was wild that these people still came. They still yes. came. They still came with great energy and hung out with everyone. Yeah, that was just a mention of, but, um, so yeah, they did a really great job. And then we popped in on, um, they did Ghost Lab, which that's not a, that's not around anymore, right? The show Ghost no, Lab? No, no, the Kling Brothers. You could still watch it. Yeah. But it's not new episodes. Well, yeah. they had mentioned they've been doing a lot of stuff online and everything too. Yeah. But their story was really cool. So they talked about this like old kind of Western oh, town so in cool. Texas where they had some really unique paranormal experiences, especially in the mansion of the people who founded the town. Mm -hmm. And then the the haunting followed them home. But there was like kind of a big twist at the end of it. And their presentation was really, really good. Their presentation was good. They were excited. But like the twist, I think, got me the most, which mm -hmm. after they left this mansion and did all the paranormal investigation, got a lot of good evidence. They actually found out they were related to the people who founded the town. Which is so bonkers to me. Like, I don't know how would you feel after. Like, you didn't find out before, like, why were they like after it would be so freaking weird. Like to realize you did they basically say that they investigated your own extended family relatives. Yeah. Did they say that they're going to go back or they can't go they back? They can't it, go back because that's right. It kind of became really popular Under and then a DJ set up like a stupid Halloween event there and then they shut all paranormal investigations down. Oh yeah. What was shut. the name of the town? It was the Ruckman Mansion. Yes. They I don't remember the oh, town. But God. yeah, that's right. They can't go back and they really want to because it would be cool for them to be like, hey, we're related or whatever. Yeah, that's a bummer. Um but no, that was really cool. They were and it's funny because they're brothers. So they have that brother energy, oh, which for is sure. like really fun. You can see it all over stage. That was cool, cool. I really liked that. I'm gonna let Kara Tell us about what happened next, though. Okay. So, again, I've never gone. So, mom was so kind to be like, hey. My mom. This is what we're doing. Yeah. Well, yeah, sorry. <laughs> she's just not my Kara's mom. Kara's part of the family now. <laughs> yeah. So, she's like, we're... um, you Okay, so, I guess we should kind of explain how Paracon works. So, you buy a general admission ticket, right? And then that allows you... You can go to all these vendors, and then you can pop in on all of these... um presenters right in these little conference what, what do you call them auditoriums conference rooms yeah, i don't know, a, even how to explain it like a typical convention you go and you listen to speakers talk about what but if you've never been to a convention you don't know what it entails True. so let's explain it to these people because i had no fucking idea so presenters for about an hour at a time giving like a talk on on what they're experts in yes so but you can also do like while these are all going on there's like little offshoots where you can you do have to pay additional but you can um get like L um, little workshops like like psychic readings yeah, like, thank you, workshops. or learn how to use ghost right. hunting equipment, all sorts of different things. So you can pay additional for these things. So she's like, we're going to Tim Shaw reading. We're going to do his gallery reading, which is where, you know, like what, 50 people can buy these tickets. You get these tickets, you can sit in this room, whatever. And so I'm like, yeah, I'm down. Like, I'm, what am I going to do by myself? Buy the ticket for me. So we go to that. And it was Tim Shaw and Exy Smith. And they're, are they, he doesn't, what does he refer to himself as? He is a trance medium. Yes, thank you. Um, And Exy is a, I think she refers to it as a psychic medium. Yes, okay. So they actually, it was really cool. So they, you know, you're in a room and they're kind of front and center. And they kind of, you know, just like made it feel cool and like explained who they were and whatnot. And there's all these just like rows of chairs. Like you kind of almost feel like you're in a classroom, but it was more comfy, cozy than a classroom, I guess you could say, right? Like, I don't know. I don't know. So how did he explain it? Like, he's basically like, we want to get the energy in the room. So it was a, a gallery psychic reading. So they want to get readings from everybody in the crowd, hit as many people as they can. So to do so, mm -hmm. yeah, like she said, you have to get the energy up. So we started seeing what was it, row your boat, but like 
row, row, row each your half was singing differently, but everyone was getting super into it, super excited. And you know what was cool about it is that it calmed everybody down because you could tell everyone's tense, right? Because you're in this room where you're like, oh my God, like my energy and everybody, you're right. So it, it kind of calmed everybody down and you could kind of feel like a different energy after, which was incredible. So how they kind of did it was they're like going to do three on three, three or three, three, right? So I can't even remember who went first, but let's just say Tim went first. I don't know. He kind of vibes, feels the energies, picks who he wants to give a reading to. He does it three, three people in a row. X, he does three people. They go back and forth. And it was an hour time slot. And I think we actually ran an hour and a half. Oh, it was yeah. So good. First of all, before she even gets into the reading stuff, let me tell you what was happening in this room. As that energy comes up and they start reading people, the lights were flickering. Uh huh. You could feel like physically feel the energy. I know Kara, half your face went numb. I couldn't stop shaking. That actually happened before. True. That happened on the way in. Okay, so this is weird. And so my left face, le- left, left face, my left, yeah, my left face, my left side of my face started kind of going. I've always known you were two faced. I know. And my left leg did. And I started kind of panicking because I really wasn't. I kind of had a headache earlier that day and I wasn't really feeling the greatest. So I kind of thought I'm like, oh, my God, what's happening? And I told Zach that like kind of as we were walking in, I was like, my like, it's weird, right? So. What I will say really quickly is that when we bought these tickets, when did we buy these tickets? Six months ago, eight months ago. It might have been more than that. And he's like, hey, we're doing this, blah, blah. It's whatever amount of money it was. I'm like, yeah, cool. Absolutely. I literally knew I was going to get a reading. I knew it. But I didn't want to talk about it. I didn't want to speak out loud because I'm like, eh, I don't want to be disappointed if I don't. But I'm like, I, there's, I, I know I'm getting it, right? About three quarters of the way through. Well, here's the thing. No, it was almost at the end, right? Yeah. Here's what's really weird is that let me actually no we're going to backtrack. So the energy we're getting all they're both getting incredible readings, right? The thing about it is at one point he was like and it's right. He goes everybody needs to stop being so tense because everybody wants this and everybody's energy. He's like I can see everybody's fists like um you know everybody has their fists like right because you're so tense. Relax, like calm down, like you know whatever. And it's so crazy because it's like you could feel it after like oh shit, everybody was so tense and like <laughs> and then um you started fucking vibrating is the only way that I could explain it. And it sounds so crazy. And if you're like a non-believer or of anything like this, you can't explain this. But I feel like the people that are listening, they will believe us. But I don't know how to explain it because it's not like teeth shattering, teeth chattering, shaking. It was we're fucking vibrating. And it was the weirdest thing I've ever witnessed, seen anything. It's almost like the the only other time I felt that is when my anxiety gets really high and you have those like body shakes. But it wasn't that no, it wasn't it was that. No. literally the energy in the room. It was so that's why I weird. say vibrating and not shaking because I don't. And I literally look at you and I'm like, you're vibrating and you're like, I know I can't stop. Your face is numb. Mom has a headache. Like. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Your mom was like going through it. The energy in the room was palpable. Like, you, oh. So I can't even. I can't even really remember a lot of the readings. They were really good, but people's responses, you could tell they're nervous, right? And you're also like in front of a group and everyone's staring at you, so it makes it even more nerve wracking. Like people, are, oh, like blah blah blah. They're like, I see three people standing behind you. Whatever, whatever it is. I think XD more sees people and shadow figures where Tim more feels yeah. and goes off of that. So if I'm not mistaken. So it's kind of intimidating if she picks you and is like, I see like, you know, a person standing behind you or two people up by you, whatever. So people's responses were kind of like, "Mm -hmm, yeah, oh, okay. And you know what I mean? Like it wasn't vivacious responses, if that makes sense, because I think people are more nervous. It is very nerve wracking. Okay, so it's almost done, right? And I, at one point in the middle, I keep, I lean over to you and I say, Tim keeps staring at me. <laughs> and Zach goes, I know. And then at one point, I realized that actually is still staring at me. And I didn't say that to you, but I'm like, I know, I, I know I'm getting reading. And on my way to Paracon, because we drove separately, we had like, what, three hours, four hour drive separately. Yeah. I literally like zoned out and I just talked to the people that I wanted to come through. And I was like, listen, this is your Tom people. And I kind of like did a little bit of meditation. I'm like, I don't have time for this. Let's go. This is the time. Meet me tomorrow at noon. So I'm like, we're getting to the end of this. Like, what's going on? Like, they're both, fe- I can tell that they're vibing off of me. Like, let's, let's, what's going on? So it's probably almost to the end. And Tim looks at me and he kind of points at me. He's like, you with a little long, dark hair. And I'm like, oh, here we go. Here's the thing. I thought it could go a lot of different ways in my brain. I'm not going to express it out loud because it doesn't need to be. But I, I did not know what way it was going to go. This is not the way that I thought it was going to go. And I'm not mad about it. So 
he goes, he says something. He's like, I, what did he first he, say? You remember? He looks Not at about- you. No, he just went right into it. Okay. I thought he said something first, but I blacked no, out. No, he, he goes, goes, the girl with a bit like black hair. And then he just looks at you and goes. Long black hair. No, no, hold on. He said something else, but he stopped in mid-sentence. And he goes, and he kind of backed up. And he goes, are you the one that sees shadow people? And I go, <gasps> and cover my face. And you go, oh my God. Because of all the things that he could have picked on for Kara, this is something, can, can I go into it? Yeah. So kind of small and trivial uh, of what you would think would come up in a psychic reading, but she has talked to me. This is not this is not what I expected. Since she moved into her house that she keeps seeing shadow people out of the corner of her eye and you and me have had. Well, I've talked about it on here. Yeah, and we've had extensive talks about how you think it's the person who lived in the house prior to you. But then I started feeling like I was a little bit negative. So I would text you. I wouldn't speak it out loud. I'd be like, just saw this, just saw whatever, blah, blah, blah. And I stopped even acknowledging it. I stopped talking about it because I'm like, I don't know what it means or what it is. So the second Tim hits on it, I just go, oh my God, so loud. Like I couldn't even hold it in. Yeah, I go <gasps> and grab my mouth. He goes, oh my God. Wow. And he goes, um, he said, um, well, that answers that or something right. like that. Because it's like, how do you, holy shit. But the whole room was like honed in on me. <laughs> Right. Because I'm not I, I don't want to even brag because it's not a bragging thing. But we were the only reading that was that. I think we were just in shock. We were. But like we were the only reading that was that um, vocal and like, ho- holy shit, where everyone knew that was genuine. Right. There's nothing fake about psychic mediums or gallery readings that should spot on. So then I kind of started like I, thought I was going to die <laughs> in a good way because I'm like, he's like, hey. I don't even remember. You might have to, because after that, I remember, but I don't. But you went, oh, my God. And he was just like, well, that answer is that. And he's laughing because right. he's like, holy shit. And X, he starts laughing. But right before, right after that, she goes, why did you steal my people? She was mine. Yeah, she like, was I was going to pick next. her next. But it turns out that it was. Well, so he, I said, okay. So he basically said, there was some stuff that he said that I'm not going to share on here. because Yeah, but at least what the shadow was. Oh, yeah, yeah. He said, he goes, don't worry about it. It's your family. They're just like popping in. They're peeking around corners, right? And I'm like, yeah, always. That's what it is. Peeking around fucking corners. Just your family. They're just checking on you if you're stressed, like whatever. They're just checking in on you. And I was like, oh, my God. It was crazy. It was incredible. And he said, I don't need to worry about it, which is what you and I were starting to worry about. And I was like, that's cool because I was starting to worry about it. I'm like, we started having this podcast. It kind of got a little weird. I didn't know. I think the biggest thing you got from that was just like, not closure, right? But just an explanation of what. what Why not? And I'm not. I don't need to be worried about it. Right. So then I think that's when Xy I got a little bit more reading that was like kind of also incredible. But again, I can't share it because it's family stuff. But it was like pretty spot on that you and I again were like, oh my <laughs> god. And then um, Xy was. I think that's when she said, "Why did you pick her? I was going to pick her." And I was. And I basically I just said, "Tell me what else you got. What you <laughs> got?" And she said the same thing. She's like, "I see your." family and yeah so that was absolutely incredible uh definitely probably the most moving experience of both the paracons i've been to is with the psychics um if you ever get a chance to do a reading like that though just do it it will change your mind on it so many other cool things though we saw a taps q a that night so we got to see jason steve satori cody <gasps> sherry dustin oh, all on stage incredible. Uh, and then we got to meet 90 percent of them later and have short mm. talks with like the original ghost hunters, like the people who made this shit cool. Yeah, they started it. Yep. That was day one. Oh, do you want to talk? day one. Wait. Oh, no. There was one other. One other day one. My girl. Okay. Your girlfriend? Andrea Perrin. She is. She. Baby. Grew up in the Conjuring house, guys. One of the kids from the movies. Like. We can't even have a conversation about that. You, It's just. We'd be her own. Oh we should have a whole other conversation. Okay, wait, should we decide this right now? Do we do we want to do a couple episodes on The Conjuring House? I think that we should. Maybe she'd help us. <laughs> she loved you. Okay, stay tuned. We might come back to that. But not only is, did she grow up in one of the most famous haunted houses of all time, this woman has had so many paranormal experiences. I mean, she... Her view on it is so incredible, incredible. as well. Incredible. And the way she pits UFOs, aliens, and ghost in the same realm it's just incredible to hear her speak um so we did and she presented her new movie that's coming out soon galactic family the galactic family oh but okay so uh on the way out though from mm. 
so we were walking out of her show. She was also walking out. First off, Zach has been Zach loves her. I love okay? her. Zach la- Zach really loves her. And she is a very eccentric person. Oh, yeah. And she is like, I mean, she's older and she's amazing. So like you just have to think of like a really crazy in the best way grandma. Yes. <laughs> Okay. And we'll talk to you all day about ghosts and aliens, but also giving you positive messages. Right. She talk about whatever you want. So he sees her. He's like, oh, my God, there's Andrea. And he just like beelines to her, which I can't even believe. And I'm like, OK. And I'm just like tagging along. I just like your talk was amazing. It's so great to see you speak again. And she just looks at you. But this woman looks at Zach, grabs his face and kisses him. I could have died right there. I think you did. I did a little bit. A part of your soul left and died done. And she's like, come to my booth. And we're like, okay. "Okay." Which we did. And we'll get to that. She just scurries off. Just scurries. She's like this mysterious woman. She just kisses you and just scurries off. I was on cloud nine. (laughs) Okay. Day two. That was all day one. That was just day one. We'll we'll make day two go quick. Okay. Really quick though. Day one though, after everybody kind of goes to the bar because it's at a casino. We met so many incredible people. We had a really great time. That's just my quick thing. Did some karaoke. We didn't. We watched some karaoke. Paranormal people get wild. We we went on a ghost hunt to a haunted hotel room, which was just filled to the brim with every haunted decoration you could have bought from like Target, Ace Hardware, all those kind of places. Yeah, there was a video. I reposted it on our um, story. Okay. Day two. Day two. Uh, starts off super strong. Sam Baltrusis and Jason and Nito. We got a clairvoyant and a demonologist who go hunting together up on stage. Talking about everything me and Kara love. They talked about Hatman, Egregores. Egregores. Puckwudgies, which Kara still needs to I was to cover. dead. Because Zach didn't even know what a puck wedgie was until I said it. And then he looks at me because they were talking about it. And I was like, I fucking dollar do. I, but they were talking about monsters of the paranormal, which was, it was such a really cool take because they take like your cryptids ask and your spirit ask and talk about how they could be the same thing. I think one of the coolest parts about that was how like monsters could be made from human energy. Oh, for sure. It makes sense. One of the things he was talking about is a lot of like poltergeist ghosts could actually be like, he's like, your teenagers in the house have so much angst and so much built up energy that they could actually be the ones making the poltergeist activity happen because of the psychic ability. And that makes so much sense because every time you hear a story, it's like a teen, a girl went through puberty and then the poltergeist attached to it and like whatever. So that made complete sense because every fucking story is usually a girl or whatever going through puberty. A poltergeist. Think of the movie Carrie, literally. Thank you. Uh, so it, that was incredible that was not and that was not one that we were going to sit on it wasn't one that we were like we thought we needed to we just ca- happened to just kind of like bop in i'm so fucking happy we right? did so happy okay go you you take the next one um so brian cano he was he did unreal unreal estate and shit what i can't even remember what show he was on oh my gosh it's so blinking right now he's incredible he's very good looking as well so he did a bunch of houses um he was talking about like how houses need energy right so like that basically these haunted houses how okay it is it, it's it's so loaded but basically right like so hauntings come from dead people he's like well houses are built out of organic matter so mm-hmm. they were built from sentient beings so how did they become sentient again and how haunted houses live off the energy of the living to keep feeding themselves and grow stronger. Yeah. And his presentation was just really cool because, you know, it it took you to houses like that were the most haunted houses. Right. And he had like a little, it was just cute. It was cool. I like his spin on it was like really awesome. Cause I mean, you have to think all these people talk about the kind of the same topic. So you have to put a spin on it. So that was really, really cool. I think really interesting that it's like, stop talking about the ghosts in the house. It's the house itself that has become this itself. sort of, it was, it was really cool. It was cool. We really enjoyed that. If one. you've ever seen Rose red by Stephen King, very similar. Oh yeah. Yeah. Then we popped into um, Ronnie LeBlanc. And he did Bigfoot and UFOs, which you and I were stoked on. Mom and dad dipped. They were like, Rah. cryptids all day. And I've heard of this, but you didn't. That Bigfoot is like an alien and that he basically, I- I'm trying to remember. We learned so much shit that I can't even remember. But you you hadn't heard that part. No, no. Like literally how alien UFO sightings and Bigfoot almost go hand in hand. Correlate. And he did this whole thing about like maps and stuff and he showed it all and like how they correlate. And if people saw Bigfoot sightings, they usually saw a UFO before or after, like whatever. And I've heard of that like briefly. That's actually a big topic that's starting in this type of um, realm or whatever. 
So that was really cool. Um, basically, like... Oh, sorry. Go on. Get, get, no, what were you going to uh, I was going to go to the next one because I'm excited about that one. Oh, I was just going to say that, like, they also... He just hit, like, um, Bigfoot being, like, a dimensional being, which we've talked about a little bit, I think, you and I. Okay. This one was so fucking good. It was... It was hilarious. It was... And we... We almost didn't stay for it because it was late on Saturday and we had to get going. Jeff Blanger. This was good. Oh, my God. This was good. So if you ever get the chance to see Jeff Blanger speak, he's absolutely amazing. He does a lot of things for... And if you don't want to listen, you can just look at him. Yes. Uh, but does so much stuff for, like, PBS, writes every mm-hmm. episode of Ghost Adventures. Yeah, which you can tell with his presentation that he... He, he was... It. Yeah, he was very <laughs> theatrical. Yeah, um, but his entire premise was on Krampus and how Christmas is actually the creepiest holiday of all time. And that these... Which it is! I've said this forever! Right. But, like, it's so played down by all the jolly, you know, St. Nick stuff. But he brought in all the other occult things around Christmas. And he's like... Where it came from is incredible. Oh, the incredible. History. And then, like, talking about how all of a sudden now in popular culture, things like Krampus and other, like, creepy Christmas traditions are coming back. Which is mm-hmm. oh, just so good. And he actually just dropped a book on it. So go check out Jeff Belanger if you want to read the whole thing. We need to buy that. One of us can oh, buy yeah. it and we'll share because that we need to read that. But I was actually so impressed with myself. And now I'm drawing a blank. But some of the stuff that he was bringing up, like he brought up, oh my God, I can't remember her fucking name, which. And I was like, oh my God, she's the one. And you looked at me like, I don't know. And then he like said, oh my God, I know <laughs> stuff. I'm so cool. Speaking of buying stuff though. He, that, but that one was incredible. I'm glad we stayed for it. Okay. We bought so many things. Here's how we are the cutest humans together. Okay. So we just kept collectively buying things, right? I'd be like, okay, I bought this. And you'd be like, okay, now I need to buy this amount of money. So I bought this, you buy this. And we're literally like all weekend, like we're a fucking couple. <laughs> That's probably why people kept thinking we're a couple. Oh, yeah. We just kept buying things and we would just like put them in a bag and we're like, don't even care who owes who what. And we're like, okay. Um, Let's talk about number one purchase. Take it away, Kara. What are we most excited about? We bought a fucking REM pod. But not your typical REM pod. No. No. It is not your typical REM pod. It is the most beautiful fucking thing I've ever seen in my life. It is a homemade REM pod. Beautifully Mm -hmm. painted. Decked out completely in black tourmaline and citrine crystals. Yeah, like the whole top of it. It's it's gorgeous. Made by a paranormal investigator, uh, Lauren Hellickson. Who? Oh, she was amazing. She, no, she was more than that. She was fucking amazing. She was the most down to earth. I just like, I I will fangirl over her for forever. Um, She was incredible. She was so sweet. So we bought that from her. And then we went back the next day to talk to her about some stuff. She happened to be on an episode of Sam and Colby, and I had to ask her about it. And she basically told me that they were amazing, and then they took notes, and they were just like cool. And I, oh my god, I couldn't even. Um, so we ended up buying some crystals from her. We'll also tag her stuff down here because her whole premise is making crystals and paranormal like equipment accessible to everyone. Yeah, handmade stuff, amazing prices. From a beautiful soul. And she does have YouTube videos, too, of how you can make your own REM pod, which I thought was amazing. So she's not only making them affordable, but she's actually showing you how you can do them yourself. So, yeah, I bought her book, too, and she signed it for me, and she wrote, Carrie, you're fucking magical. Ugh. (laughs) All right. Anyway, what else? What else? What else? What else? I am. Anytime you have, like, a mystery sale where you're buying something and you don't know what you're buying, I'm so suckered in. Oh, my God. Your mom even commented. You're like, ever since you were little. (laughs) <laughs> so Traveler's Moon, Chris and Kelly, who are also paranormal investigators, had a whole thing set up. Mm-hmm. Um, I love it. One side was like paranormal equipment. The other side was all like crystals and stuff. But they had these. It was like, so fucking cute. Balls or orbs, I guess, like filled with They're crystals. Balls. They're mystery, mystery balls. Mystery balls filled with. You didn't know what crystals you would get, but you also got to pick something from their table depending on like the note in there yeah so the cool thing is that kelly's like okay so they're three dollars and we make sure you get at least three dollars worth of stuff so you get you get a ball and has crystals in it and a little slip that has something else that you could get but at least you get three dollars worth of stuff which i thought was really cool i'm like okay cool so zach's like we gotta get the balls (laughs) okay so we each get a ball so mine had stickers which i'm a freak for stickers was my free item yes uh you got a keychain keychain 
My first one was keychain. And then we went back because <laughs> so we couldn't stop. So we got bracelet the next time, stickers. Oh, and you got the necklace. No, she was so sweet and said, you guys can take a necklace. That is true. She gave me a bunch of extra stickers. She's so sweet. She gave me a, um, uh, yep, she gave me a necklace and it was the tarot card. You 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 picked it out. Earth, I think. Uh, the world. The world, the world, the world. But my bracelet is, it's what are these hematite ones? hematite and howlite beads with a little ghost keychain. And then it has a cute little ghost on it. I'm dead. My keychain had little um, acrylic ghosties on it. So they were just so sweet. Such great people. Then we went back to our girl, Exie, from the reading. We bought all of her books and she's <laughs> so graciously signed them even though i accidentally interrupted her while she was doing a reading she said that's no big deal i was all the time but so we bought four of her books <laughs> so i bought a book from lauren okay we start there i bought a book from lauren then we bought four books from Axie. yes yeah. i also bought and i'm so sorry i can't remember their name but a haunted grand rapids bars book oh shoot what was her name uh, we'll make sure we put it in the notes we'll look it up um nicole beauchamp yes perfect yes Oh, and she did paranormal massages. What did she call those? Oh, it was, the sign was, it wasn't a paranormal massage. They had somebody there. You could no. either buy a massage or you could pay $5 and hold a real human skull. No, that was her. next to each other. That was her because she was massaging that lady's shoulders and the girl that sold you the book was like, give her a second, oh, yeah, she'll yeah, sign yeah. it for you. <laughs> yeah, so they were doing massage and selling books and you could hold a human skull. You could never find all of those at one booth. It was amazing. So then... We're walking through and we see our boy Sam and Jason, who Jason was the demonologist. And we're like, oh, we've got to go to this. So we go up to them. And this interaction was the best fucking interaction interaction that we ever had. So it was me, you and your dad. Your mom was off getting a reading, right? And so we start talking to them. And I'm just like, first off, you're like to Jason, you're like, this was incredible. You hit everything that Kara and I love and talk about. And I'm like, how is it being a demonologist? What the fuck? Anyway. So we talked to him and basically also, I'm just going to put this out there. He said in how many investigations? Over 500. Oh yeah. Over 500. He said about how many percent? 0.1. We're actual demons. So come on. Like I said, leave the demons alone. Anyway, we're chatting with them. It's hilarious, right? Take it away. What happens? Funny shit ever. You start talking. Well, you were talking to Sam. I was yeah, talking to Yeah, so I started talking to Sam because I had talked to Sam the day before. I have known the name. Oh, yeah. You didn't Never even known know. the face. Didn't even realize I was talking to Sam Beltrusis. And he's so cute. He's just funny. They're so wonderful. But then we started talking about crystals. Well, Jason goes, Oh, that's right. Oh, Sam, show me your, your tiny penis. And we're like, What? And I think even Jason was like, What did well, I just okay. say? Me, you, and your dad were like, what the hell? Sam got red. Jason started like laughing internally, you could tell, but also like uncomfortable. Like, what the fuck did I just say? So then, no, actually, he didn't say crystal. He said, show them your tiny penis. But we didn't know it was a crystal. No. He just said, show them your tiny penis. So we're all like laughing, me, you, and your dad. Like, what the fuck's going on? So then he's trying to get into his pocket of his shirt and he's looking in his all and he's like, he's awkwardly like searching he's like oh my god i lost my little penis <laughs> i can't find it oh we we're all dying. the best part is is that your mom's getting reading a couple tables down right and yeah. we're so loud all of us right all five, how many whatever five of us are laughing hysterically and your mom told us later that she's like the psychic like looked over they both looked over she goes oh that's my family <laughs> <laughs> Turns out, though, Sam's tiny penis was just a crystal the whole time. It was a little crystal. It was so oh, my cute. God. That looked like a dick. We were dying. Dying. Laughing. But like the the demonologist is also a theologian, and like a man of God, right? Like He's a deacon. Re religion. Yeah, a deacon He's in church. A deacon. Like, <laughs> these things you didn't think they would come out of their mouth, but they were, was they were hilarious. And they were so real. DM me if you need a demonologist because I have his number. <laughs> couple other things we did buy a board game Wait, from brian Cano, no the Unreal Estate guy. Bought, oh my god we bought two of sam's books oh yes we did buy two of sam's books and i already I think finished mine you're finished with yours i'm three quarters of the way through mine yeah, i need more it. okay uh we bought all the books okay then we bought the game from brian Cano from the unreal estate guy <laughs> yes which we didn't get that. to play don't play it without we will. me I, who else am i gonna play that with i don't know which yeah he has a cool board game that's incredible um oh my god uh, then we bought tarot, um, tarot card bags. Yeah. Is that what you call them? Like bags Thomas. to carry your deck in that have like one of the cards imprinted on the bag. They were really cute. You so graciously gave me death because there's only one and you wanted it yes. too, but I wanted it. I took the fool because, you know, um, but they were really cute. That was from the two girls, um, Nicole and Nicole Noelle. Nicole and Noelle. 
They do the quite unusual podcast. Go check them out. They're awesome. Which we'll come we can talk. We'll come back to them because they need they need extra attention. <laughs> yes. Okay. So that was pretty much that was kind of everything we did, right? I mean, that's in a nutshell. Like what we bought, what we saw. <laughs> we collectively bought eight books. So we have a lot of reading to do. Um, we bought a game, we bought a bunch of stuff. I'll tag everything and yes. But we have such incredible moments. What what was what was your favorite moment? I don't know if I can't. Okay. I can't say a favorite because we had so many incredible moments, right? But we were coming out of the bathroom. Or I was. Or you, you were. I can't remember. And this woman comes up to me and goes, your reading at Tim Shaw was so incredible. It was moving. She's like, I cried. Oh. And then I think I blacked out. But what did she give me? Oh, she gave you a um, Black Obsidian Worry Stone. Yes. And she goes, I'm going to give you this as mine. And I said, no, no. Oh, my God. You don't. And she goes, no, for real. If you ever think that it's too much or the shadows or whatever, like, you know, you're and she's like, just hold it. And I'm like, oh, my God. Just the sweetest human beings. Nadine. Nadine and um, Cindy. Cindy. Oh, God. And I think we're that... going to go do some paranormal investigation with them in a couple months. No, we are. We don't think we are. It's already planned. But not the only paranormal team we met. So, okay, this is going to be a twofold meek. story. It's going to be a twofold story. We're doing both. To, before we met the second paranormal team, <laughs> I obviously on this podcast, I've talked about John Tenney a few times. I'm a huge fan of his. I think he's one of the best investigators, people in the paranormal UFO field. He's incredible. I did not talk to him the first time I went to Paragon. <gasps> That's how we met her. Oh, my God. Yes. So I walked up to him and I go, John, I met you or saw you speak four years ago. I've been a huge fan ever since. I was way too much of a pussy to come talk to you. I'm going to say hi now. No, you said I'm a really big fangirl. Yeah, I'm a really or I've been fangirling. Yeah. Yes. And he said, cool. <laughs> he gives us signed autographs, which was amazing. We got to meet Jessica Napick from What's Up Weirdo, yes. the podcast they do together. And towed her dog. And towed her dog. Okay, so. We walked away from them, and I am, like, on cloud nine. I'm, like, telling Kara how excited I am that I, I manned up and talked to John. And this woman walking in front of us turns around, and she, like, kind of joins the conversation. She's like, you guys are so cute. Turned out to be Chris from the Ghostly Players Paranormal Team out of Wisconsin. We ended up hanging out with... Kept running into her. Anyway, so we start hanging out with her. We see her all around. We saw her at the bar Saturday night. She invited us or in, yeah, invited us to go hang out with the rest of the Ghostly Players Paranormal team, which was Alona and Connie. Which Alona we heard was like hard, to, you know, she's hard to impress. We got to get the okay to with hang her. out with the group. We got to we got to get Alona's. Do you know approval. how long it took to get her approval? 7 seconds. 2.5. <laughs> and these girls, not only are they awesome paranormal investigators, uh, women, let's say women, not girls. Yeah. They do theater, but they also killed the karaoke game all night. Nobody could go after. Funniest part was, is that she was, I can't remember, but she basically was like, oh yeah, I was lived in Wisconsin. I'm like, oh yeah, I lived in Wisconsin for seven years. She's like, where? Blah, blah, blah. One of my best friends knows her son-in-law, which is freaking hilarious. And, so and it's just so funny. So it's like, so we're going to do some investigating with them eventually. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. You want to talk about I already talked about the one thing, but I got the kiss from Andrea and then I got a second kiss from Andrea. Okay. And then what happened after that second kiss from Andrea? Okay. So then we went back to John Tenney's table because we realized we forgot to take a picture with him. And then we realized my dad, our photographer was no longer around so we so i'm like oh man dad and i turn around and it's not dad it's andrea and i was like can you please take a picture for me and she goes yes and she's like so thrilled right and i think it's like her assistant or somebody that's with her i don't know i don't want to say assistant but i don't know and she's like no i'll take the picture you get in zach's already buddied up there oh so i've got like my two my uh I don't even dead. know how to say dead. It. I'm dead inside. All right. So the people I love the most in our field, one on my right, one on my left. We got Carol. We got then Jessica Napick and Toad. And Andrea is so excited to take this picture. She's like, this is going to be the hit of Facebook. But she's loud. She's a loud voice. Oh my God. Everyone woman. is staring. The line to go through starts getting backed up to people are looking at us. I think other people started taking pictures because they thought that we were people. 
Like, because Andrew was acting excited to take pictures of us. We're nobody. And, oh, I don't know. Your mom and dad were like, we didn't know what was going on. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Then throughout, I know we're getting, this is going to be just a longer episode. We're too excited. Sorry, guys. Then just throughout the night, you just like walk around the, uh, the casino and you see people. We saw Tim Shaw and he talked to us for at least 45 minutes. At least. Which was mind blowing. He gave us more of a reading or more, you more of a reading. He talked to us more about of insight. Yeah. The theory and how they do it and all this background information. Oh and- my God. He gave us such incredible insight on everything. But the the coolest part about him was, is what I would say, is that every time we were like, okay, well, you know what? We know you got to go. He'd be like, why? They can wait or everyone can wait. Like he, tell, how many times did we just not, he never was at his booth because he was always talking to people. He makes you feel like you are the only person there. Yes, he did. And wants to impart all of his wisdom on you. Uh, Just an incredible human being. Absolutely. With a great story. Then we met Taps, but not all of Taps because I... We did get pictures with Jason Hawes. Which Zach told him he was old. I did. Um, I didn't mean to tell him he was old. I just said I've been watching you since I was like a little kid. He's like, way to make me feel old. (laughs) Yeah, I know. (laughs) With uh, Cody and Satori. So Satori is Jason's daughter... The cutest human being. And she, yeah, they. They have come up with these ways to talk to spirits, which they've been getting incredible results. Incredible results. But also they are caretakers for the conjuring house. So they literally live there two weeks out of every month. Mm -hmm. Um, And just the way they talk about the conjuring house and the way Andrea talks about it compared to like what you see on TV or on YouTube completely different experience well yes but i also will say andrea andrea even notes that her siblings have had different experiences and they feel completely different about the conjuring house so i think that is kind of cool about whatever everyone who goes there has such a unique experience which is why it is now on our bucket list um i didn't get to meet my boyfriend so do you want to explain why so obviously steve from taps is he's a very good looking human being i kara was a little bit infatuated no, that's not, don't even, no, don't put it that way. I've loved him since I was little, but it wasn't that. <laughs> no, it wasn't because I would have went up to him. I had no problem going up and talking to him. And Friday night when we were all at the bar, I really wanted to. What happened was for whatever reason, every time I would just turn and like look a certain way, he'd be there and him and I would make eye contact. And it was fucking awkward. Well, it got to the point where it happened, no joke, like 10 times to the point where your mom's like, he thinks you're a stalker now. Yeah, there is no way you could have had a normal conversation. No, but I will note, why was he always where I was? Anyway, so I never went up and talked to him because I thought it would be so awkward and weird. I wasn't even afraid to talk to him. I was just like afraid of the fact that we kept making eye contact all week, week, weekend. And (laughs) so I never did. And you were like, yeah, we just won't. And then I was like so fucking upset when we left because it was like damn i've always wanted to meet him and he was always an arm's distance at that bar he was literally like two seats away from me and i'm really mad at myself but i just thought he would think i was a stalker so there's that so the last thing to talk about is late on saturday so Kara and i went we went extreme not extreme but we had good outfits for paracon we were in the vibe we were kind of feeling it and we walked past these two girls. We had each had a few drinks. Yeah. This was late. We were actually leaving. You were ordering me chicken strips so that we could go. The two of them looked over. One girl goes, oh, my God, your outfits. I just want to say they slay. We're like, oh, my God, you guys are so cute. And then so- she just goes, slay, slay, slay. And I was <laughs> like, was okay. So we're like, at that point, we're like shamelessly self-promoting our show. And we're like. So I don't like if you guys like our outfit, you might like our podcast or I was like, what do we say? We're like, are you sure they didn't tell us first that they had a yes, podcast? Because we're like, okay. we have a podcast. You might want to listen to it. She goes, shut up. Oh, we yeah. also have a podcast. So we end up meeting some like way cool podcasters in the field. They were the cute. Uh, so we uh, talked about them earlier. So Nicole Noel, cutest little shits ever. The ones we bought the tarot bags from. And it sucks because the next day. Saturday, I waved to Nicole, but like she, they were like leaving and like we didn't get to like go talk to them again. But they were so fucking cute. And I started, so you started listening too to their podcast. I started mm-hmm. listening and they did an episode of the Bell Witch. We all know how I love the fucking Bell Witch. We haven't covered the Bell Witch because it's oh, a they lot. did like a two part deep in depth episode. It's so they did good. a two parter. They did a two parter. And I'd be loving that Bell Witch. So that was just incredible. But we just met so many fucking people. It's insane. Um, 
Okay. One more, one more thing is, so we met these couple so incredible and I cannot remember their names to save my life. I'm so sorry, but their social media and everything is we have fun and they do, um, they, they just go all over the world and they explore and they make funny things and cool stuff. And they do a lot of really cool videography. Yes. Thank you. And their business card is actually a wooden planchette. And it is just absolutely incredible. And they've been giving us so much love on social media. And it was just like cool to meet them. And they took a video. Yeah, check. I was to say, check out their social media because they did this amazing video recap. Like a God. recap. And I'm in it. <laughs> I'm in it. With oh, demon eyes. No, actually, I was just ha- I think I was actually hiding from the camera. I'm not going to lie. I think I was like darting away from the camera, but it's actually still kind of cute. Slay, 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 slay. It goes from this like demon baby face and then it morphs into Kara's even in the so they send us a message saying you might recognize someone in here and they go sorry or hopefully like we didn't do you dirty with the demon eyes. <gasps> Wait, I didn't see that message. Oh my I god. just saw you might. Oh my yeah. god. I only you gotta go saw respond might... to them. <laughs> no, I did, but I didn't see that part. I just oh read my the, god. you might recognize somebody. That's Anyways, so though. The whole weekend was incredible. It's been a week since we've gotten back. We're still not over it. Just meeting so many people who are interested in the same things and everyone being so weird. And all these people you've seen on TV and, and are famous in the field, right, being so approachable and talkative. It's just an absolutely incredible experience. So if you ever get the chance to go to Paracon, make sure you do. And come say hi to us, but don't touch Kara. Yeah, don't. Unless you we become friends, then I'll hug you and love you and... If you're Andrew a parent, you could kiss me. All right. Well, we love you. We enjoy you. Thanks for waiting patiently to hear about our recap. Um, we have exciting things coming. Um, talk to us on social media. Tell me I'm pretty. But most importantly, creep it real, yeah, balls. Goodbye. Bye. Oddity Shop.